How's it going, everybody? Thank you for tuning into the stream today. I have with me Jared Seiler from Hello. Jared on Vinyl. And today we're going to discuss two albums. Um, Jared kind of texted me one day um, and asked if you know we could do this like album review. So, by the way, just real quick, um, Jared's channel has... Uh, the link to that channel is in the description. He reviews albums. I really actually do highly recommend it. He's very thorough and, uh, you know, just detailed. And I, I appreciate that a lot. So I would recommend you go check out Jared's channel. Uh, thank you for being here, Jared. Yeah. Uh, it's an honor to be here on your channel, Daniel. So um, let's talk about the albums that we're going to review. We basically, what we did was we both chose an album for each other to listen to mm -hmm. and um i chose an album called Wu hen by kamal kamal williams and uh you can yeah i i chose an album called love and theft by bob dylan so yeah basically i just i wanted to have a new idea for my channel because i did i've done uh album review i think i've done one but i'm going to do more and then i do a like um record uh, videos about my record collection and things like that um, but I just wanted a new idea so I asked him and then I kind of came up with this and asked him if he wanted to do it so and he was down so uh, yeah we both picked an album and yeah we're gonna start with Bob Dylan's Love and Theft so this this is his 31st studio album Wow. Um, released on September 11th, 2001 by Columbia Records. And, and I was actually curious about that. That was just a coincidence. Yeah. Um, okay. That's it, unfortunate. It was a coincidence being released on 9-11. And some people tried to find, like, lyrics in the album that were, like, hints. Like so conspiracy? That he knew about the attack or something. But hmm. I, it's just conspiracy. It peaked at number five on the Billboard 200 in the U.S. And it has been certified gold. Um, and there was another interesting thing that I saw. It, it There's, like, allegations of plagiarism. And I'm reading this from Wikipedia, but I had already heard about this. There are a lot of lyrical similarities between um, the album and um, words from a Japanese writer, Junichi Saga's book, Confection, Confessions of a Yak Yakuza. Yakuza. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right. Um, and a lot of a lot of lines are either directly from the book or pretty obviously inspired by the book. And when the author was, you know, told about it, he was actually honored that Bob Dylan would use um, his words and his lyrics. So that was pretty interesting. And also, it was rated on the old. Uh, I know they just updated it this year, but on the old list of 500 greatest albums by Rolling Stone, it was ranked number 385. Oh. And wow. just a couple more things. It won a Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Folk Album at the 44th Grammy Awards. And it was nominated for Album of the Year. And the track Honest With Me was nominated for Best Male Rock Performance, which is a little bit surprising. But, you know... Uh, first, I wanted to ask you, Daniel, mm -hmm. what you thought of the vocal performances from Dylan on this album. Okay. What is your opinion? That's funny you asked that. Uh, and by the way, we have not talked about the, the albums to each other yet. So that is actually my one gripe with this album. That's honestly probably my, my least favorite. I think that in some respects, he actually kind of ruins the album, like the instrumental is going really great and and then he comes in and i i think it's accurate to say he honestly sounds like a drunk guy in a bar <laughs> just can't you hear that yeah, it, yeah um so that is i mean if you can just kind of get over that and set that aside apart from that you know i think it's it's a, a really good album and i was it unfortunately i think the voice that he uses kind of is so distracting from the lyrics. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really able, naturally, I just didn't focus on the lyrics because I was so distracted by this. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, 
I'm gonna share my you know thoughts on that too. But right, because think, you're a big yeah. Bob, Bob Dylan fan. Yeah. So. I am a big Bob Dylan fan just originally, so you know I'm probably a little bit biased, and I can see how somebody who hasn't heard a lot of his stuff could think that you know, um, where if it's not you know good singing, it might kind of bring the album down. But he is right how the vocal is very raspy and you know i don't think he's a big smoker but you know he has smoked in his life and it sounds like kind of a smoker a mm -hmm. drunk guy but i think in my opinion it really is entertaining for me and hmm. it, again it's probably because i'm biased for Bob entertaining Dylan. that's an interesting word to use honestly uh, yeah. i think it makes the album a lot more entertaining and i think he really presses um what he's trying to say with his lyrics with his voice just it's not really as much there as it was earlier on in his career he was like 60 years old when he released this album and i think for one it's entertaining and when i listen to this album i really think about you know maybe america in the you know early 1900s and a lot of the imagery is maybe some like comparable comparable to Mark Twain a little bit I think hmm. and some of the um, musical arrangements especially on songs like um, Floater, Too Much to Ask or High Water and I, I really think that he is conveying the sense of, of America in that time with his voice and I'm probably overthinking a little bit but you know I can actually it, see that yeah. strange, strangely enough yeah he, he's kind of like conveying this image of a working class American back in that time, in mm. my opinion. Okay, but that—that's just my opinion. Of course, I'm biased for Bob. So Dylan. if, but honestly, if you did not have, if you weren't a, such a big Bob Dylan fan, do you think you would like, or I pr not say I won't say like? Do you think you would appreciate his vocal performance as much as you do now? Probably not. Okay. Probably not. But you know, one of his big, you know things that draws people in is mainly his songwriting yeah and also like that's what he's recognized for i think mm -hmm. his 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 voice you know yeah. people do the and impression at this point in his career he is kind of you know he's had many parts to his career you know he started out with kind of the straightforward kind of protest songs if you call them while he's disavowed it um recently but and then he kind of has his surreal poetic imagery. Um, and this is more of a lean towards um, observational poetry, in my opinion. Kind of just like, um, you know, kind of like it really reminds me of Mark Twain and mm -hmm. uh, maybe the poet. You know, he does read a lot of poetry, something like that. So, yeah. I was, I was, okay, so should we get into each track by track now? Yeah, unless okay. you have anything else. You want to I say. mean, I was, I guess I'll say this now, but when you listen to it, it's really interesting because you, you said this was a, a, a folk album, but there's such a, a large range of songs. I think there's a lot of jazz. There's even one one song that's very, very country sounding. I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with, with the album enough to like n n remember the titles. I have actually some notes on my phone so I can, um, um okay so number track number seven high water i remember that was distinctly mm -hmm. very country you know more more so than the rest and let me see uh track number eight moonlight really great jazz elements um so i was i was curious why you labeled it as a, a folk album because to me it seems more like a just a compilation of different things well i I mean, that was mainly uh, what the Academy labeled it. Hmm. I, w I would really label this as sort of a, uh, a blues and roots rock album. Yeah. Because you have, like, s like you know, hard rocking blues songs on this, and you also have, like, songs like By and By and Moonlight, which are, like, kind of more jazzy, like something you would hear from maybe, like, Billie Holiday or Frank Sinatra or something hmm. like that which i have i've read recently his his biography or autobiography or whatever you call it that he's written called bob dylan chronicles and he really details all of the music that he was listening to that's influenced him 
and a lot of it is you know things like Judy Garland and uh, you know Bing Crosby and things like that that okay. he does say that he grew up listening to. Interesting. And you know he adds all these different elements into it. So yeah, all right. So let's start with track one, uh, Tweedledee, Tweedledum, and I'm gonna try and play it in the background. Um, I don't think that should be problematic. I'm just gonna check and make sure that the levels are right. But here's in the background, you should be able to hear a little taste of what this song sounds like, so you can you know have some sort of reference as to what we're talking about. Jared, do you want to start? Does it sound good? I I can't hear you. Yeah, there's okay. a delay. Um. All right. So, the first song is called Tweedledee and Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Sorry. Even though he never, when he sings it, he says Tweedledee D and Tweedledee Dum. So I just kind of thought that was a little bit um, uh, something to point out. But the lyrics on here, I don't really, because I don't really know who he's talking about. He's obviously talking about someone um but i i've really after going over these lyrics i can't really think of who he would be talking about but lyrically it's probably um my least favorite song on the album just overall but i still think it, it's quite good and for each of these songs i'm going to try and find a favorite lyric some of them i already have favorite lyrics and some of them i don't and this is one of them that i don't but probably um, my favorite lyric on here would be uh, living in the land of Dodd, trusting their fate to the hands of God. They pass by so silently, tweedly dumb and tweedly dee. Hmm. So the land of Nod, if you're not familiar with it, is a biblical reference. I'm pretty sure it's where when Abraham's sons, like they divided the land. This is, I think this might be in Genesis very early on in history. I didn't um, know that the land of Nod, one of Abraham's sons went to the land of Nod, which I can't remember which son it was. Okay. But I do remember that Bible story. But that's just, you know, Bob Dylan is a professed Christian. Didn't he have a phase where he released like three Christian yeah. albums? He did so, release three okay. gospel albums like late 70s, early 80s. Okay. So he does have spiritual influence and you see a lot of it in his songwriting. But that's just an interesting lyric. Yeah, so things that I noticed about this one, I thought it was a very interesting opener to the whole album. The way that, I mean, it, it fades in so fast. Uh, just to me, I think there's other tracks that would have been a better first track. Um, and I really, I like a lot of the, the, the elements of this song. Like, if you can, I'm trying to listen right now, actually. I think that's a really good guitar part. The guitar is there. There's like these interesting sounds that kind of come in here and there that are really appealing. The percussion, it sounds to me kind of like a train, like chugging along. I, I like the I like the percussion a lot. Um, it's catchy, but again, just if you had never heard of Bob Dylan and you hear this this track, just the instrumental, and then out of nowhere you hear this this voice. I think it'd be very, very striking. Um, but, I mean, if you can kind of get familiar with that and get over that, I think it, it's, a, it's a pretty good track. Yeah. I think it's definitely acquired taste, his voices. Mm -hmm. So, I think I would give this song, I'm going to rate each each song out of 10. I, I think I would probably give this song an 8. Um, it is my least favorite on hmm. the album, as I said before. I. I'm not saying it's a bad opener. Um, I don't really think any songs on this album are bad, but hmm. I, I it's not it's really not my favorite, obviously. Okay. So I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm not gonna rate them one out of ten, um, but I, I I'll just say if I like it or not. This one I actually liked, so um, there were really not many that I actually didn't like. So, moving on to the next track, Mississippi. What do you have to say? So this song was kind of a throwaway at first from I think from his uh, album before this and he gave it to um, another I can't remember who it was that he gave it to to um, use for their album but he decided to record it after you know times that he tried and he couldn't find the right um, the right vibe for the song and I think it's one of one of the better songs on the album 
Let me pull up the lyrics here. Um, I think lyrically it's very good. It's, it's kind of, it's not, I wouldn't really try and put it into a genre, kind of country influence a little bit, kind of just straight rock. Um, not really rock and roll, but kind of like a more, more of a country rock sound from him. Um, as I look for my favorite lyric, how about you? All right, actually, so this one's, this was one that I kind of am indifferent about. I don't necessarily really like it, and I, there's nothing about it that I don't like necessarily. Um, I wasn't able to, you know, I don't know the lyrics. I, I just may, for me, actually, because I'm more of a mixer, um, like ma in making music, that's what I'm usually listening to in any song is, is the sonics of it. So, um, sonics sounded good. Uh, the drums I liked, I can remember they, I like them a lot. Um, but yeah, this was one that was to me just okay. You know? Yeah. I, th by the way, Bob Dylan did produce this album as well. He under, did under a false name, Jack Frost. Really? Which was so either he said it or somebody figured out that it was him. But uh, yeah, I think my favorite lyric would had to be have to be in verse two. Um, uh, where is it? Um, I need something strong to distract my mind. I'm gonna look at you till my eyes go blind. And also like the lyric. Uh, where is it? I just saw it. I was raised in the country. I was. I've been working in the town. I've been in trouble ever since I set my suitcase down. I just really like the the imagery he uses there, and he ties it up at the end of each verse. Stayed in Mississippi a day too long. I I, I like that lyric too. I like how he ties everything up hmm. and blames it all on Mississippi. With him, you never really know if he's actually singing about Mississippi in particular. Oh. Something that he's kind of comparing to Mississippi or as a state in general. If it's an analogy, yeah. Okay. You, you never really know with him. Interesting. Yeah. That's my opinion on Mississippi. And that is also my opinion on Mississippi. All right, moving on to summer days. Summer also, days. I, I'm sorry to do this mid doing in track by track, but I don't I don't remember if I asked you why you chose this album. Uh, I chose it, I think, mainly just because I wanted to hear your thoughts. And okay. I just cannot get enough of this album. Like, ever since I, I bought it, at a record store in like Tennessee, um, just kind of I'd never heard it before, and I listened to it, and I was just kind of like blown away. Hmm. Okay. So I've really been listening to it a lot lately, so that's kind of why I just wanted to. All right. Start off with it. Like that. All right. So now summer, summer days. days. Now, right off the bat, this reminds me of I think the Jingle Bell Rock is <laughs> like, honestly, yeah. what that guitar reminds me of, uh, and kind of like even the way it's being played, just that's what probably to 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 most people it would remind you of i do like the the swing or or the rhythm that you have going on here let me look at my notes um yeah i like the vibe actually so yeah m just as a mixer i think the voice is a little bit too quiet in the mix just a little bit um maybe like one or two dbs i would put it up just like one or two dbs but uh overall it, it's great i could see it being played at like a, a, a dance or something um yeah yeah so i have a lot to say pretty much about this song um i really can't get enough of this song i've listened to this song so many times and i think the lyrics are amazing i think they're very funny i i, I love i love this kind of music i would the only thing barring me from saying that this is not just rock and roll is the guitar tone and um, kind of the bass lines that are going on. So this is kind of j jazzy, like pre-rock, in my opinion. Um, it's like swing, swing music. I mean, people, I, I just have, a, I'd have a blast dancing to this because I like dancing to this kind of music. Um, and the lyrics, I have so many favorite lyrics on this one. Um, let me see. I got a house on a, so the way he does this is he does two, um, I'm going to call them stanzas, two stanzas of the same lyric and then one that ties it together for each verse. 
So for this one, it's I got a house on a hill. I got hogs out lying in the mud. I got a long-haired woman. She's got royal Indian blood. I love that lyric. And then he kind of has these interludes. Uh, driving in the flats in a Cadillac car. The girls all say you're a worn out star. My pockets are loaded and I'm spending every dime. How can you say you love someone else when you know it's me all the time? So another um, signature Dylan thing that he's been doing mostly later in his career. Oh, okay. We saw, we saw Mars. We will later. We're doing a video right now. See Mars later. Lydia's seen Mars. Mars in the telescope. Uh, sorry about the interruption. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, another thing that he's been doing, especially later on in his career, he doesn't really sing in time with the beats of the music, really. He hmm. just kind of says what he has to say, and, you know, he doesn't really care where he is in the song sometimes, which might be accredited to how old he is. He might, like, forget. A <laughs> really? yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, I think he has some great lyrics. What good are you anyway if you can't stand up to some old businessman? The lyrics on his website are wrong. He sings them differently, but maybe they are taken from his actual written lyrics. Um, I know there's one really in particular. My back has been to the wall for so long, it seems like it's stuck. Why don't you break my heart one more time just for good luck? That's really funny. And then one more. Uh, if you got something to say, speak now or hold your peace. If it's information you want, you can get it from the police. And I really like that lyric. That, yeah, so I can tell even just from, like, it's really interesting, but, in like, just from the influence that Bob Dylan has had on you and the way, the lyrics that you've written in the past, I know that, that Bob Dylan has this kind of, like, um, witty, like, this wit about him. Yeah. And, and that, like, I can see that in the songs that, that you've written is that that wit um but just like that line i like for those of you on my channel who don't know i do write some music and he produces some of it so he would know but yeah he has been a huge influence on what i write yeah um and yeah very very uh funny imagery used in this song and i love this song yeah it's, it's i would say it's probably one of my favorites yeah all right next song by and by this is mm. one of the ones that is very more of a jazzy, you know, kind of a dance hall tune a little bit is how I would describe it. What do you think? Okay. So in my notes, I wrote down, I like a lot of the elements that, you know, make this song, this song. But again, I'm sorry that this is going to be a reoccurring thing, but it's just like, I didn't think that the voice is what i didn't think it went necessarily well with the instru instrumental mm -hmm. i would think that maybe a michael buble kind of voice like a smooth smoother voice would go really well with this instrumental um but again if you can just kind of get acclimated with with his voice and just be like this is his artistic style this is just how it is actually i i do like it i think you know maybe even though that's not what you would think of like hey this 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 voice goes with this kind of track i wouldn't think that initially but it actually can work and i think yeah. it does i think it does work i think um you know he's definitely not a crooner by any means but you know he is trying something that he loves and he's written a song you know that he wants to sing and he does it and I mean I I really get what you're saying but I think it's kind of respectable that he would try something like this mm -hmm. you know that's different from pretty much anything prior that he's done mm -hmm. um, yeah I, I mean I really do like the vibe yeah. of this yeah I this is a very old vibe and I have one lyric that has always been my favorite um, I'm going to baptize you in fire so you can sin no more. I'm going to establish my rule through civil war. going to make you see just how loyal and true a man can be. And that ends the song. So another thing for Dylan is that what do you associate when you hear this type of music? Like well, for me, I, I think of, this might sound weird, but it makes yeah. me think of the uh, 
the zombies opening cutscene oh, from yeah. Call of Duty. Do you <laughs> yeah, know that thing? Bit. Yeah, uh, that song. Um, but that's that's why I think why. Well, no, I was just usually when I hear this kind of music, you think of like really soft like love song. I would think of like if it's not the zombies thing, yeah. which is obviously, <laughs> I would think of like a slow dance at, at yeah. like a. Uh, yeah, some yeah. sort of thing. So you don't really expect to hear a lyric like "I'm gonna baptize you in fire so hmm. you can sin no more." And oh yeah, like okay, this. I see what you're saying. And this is another thing that that Bob Dylan does is he doesn't really adhere to kind of the unwritten rules of music. Like yeah. usually, if you're being sappy and you want to look back on life and write a song like this, you're gonna be like, you know, I love my baby and she loves me. But really yeah, that's not the route he takes. Even though this is a love song it's just the way he feels about love is a lot differently i think i yeah and i i like that a lot i think sometimes people do that on accident especially well in hip-hop most people if you you can give them a, a beat that you might say this sounds like it would be a love song and, and just mm -hmm. like this instance and then be talking about like killing people and yeah. so <laughs> i mean that's just something people do on accident but i think that's not i think with him it's more of an intentional thing it's more of a stylistic thing that it's actually and i know yeah, yeah and i know by the way the lyrics on his website are wrong like i don't know why but i looked at them and i knew they weren't right just from listening to it and he needs to fix that but anyway i know bob dylan in his book he detailed that um he he does listen to hip-hop and he had been listening to the hip-hop you know all the trends and i remember like he said an interviewer asked him what he was listening to, and he said Ice T and N.W.A. and they were not expecting that. No, I wouldn't be. So like he recognizes, you know, real recognizes real, and you know he knows that you know hip hop is just as poetic as you know can maybe, be, can, can be. be just as poetic as Frank Sinatra. Huh. Of course, I wouldn't compare you know the legends like you know N.W.A. to other things that would be described as hip hop. We're not going to we'll get into this, get into but that. honestly. <laughs> NWA is not as good as people make. All right, we're not, I'm not going <laughs> to say anything else. All right. Um, all right. So, so yeah, the next song, nice "Lonesome song. Day Blues." I hope people don't get mad at me for saying that about no. NWA. All right. No, I don't care. Oh, and yeah. Okay, I remember this track. Okay, right. so this is a straight, you know, hard rocking blues song. One of the, you know, the rockers on the album, and this is just a pretty much a straight blues song. I'm gonna say this, yeah. and I might. I feel like this song is just a little bit too cliche. Like, if you think of whatever. I could just see this in a movie. It just sounds exactly like whatever you would think of when you think of, like, this kind of. this music. Like, it's mm -hmm. the, like, perfect example. Yeah. It's a little bit in that regard, like, too cliche. Um. Yeah. I do, yeah, yeah. I definitely get what you're saying. And, like, you know, back when he, I'm going to, like, say a lot of what he said in the book, but people actually frowned upon making new chord structures, like, back when he was first getting into music. Like, really? he was on the folk scene, and people said, like, they really, what they did was they took old, um, old song structures mm -hmm. and put new lyrics to them. Hmm. Or they just sang old songs. They really didn't like a whole lot of advancement. So he was criticized for it. So, I mean, obviously, he's advanced music a good bit, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But he just goes back to the roots here. And I really like I really like blues music for me. I know you probably don't, and you probably don't really listen to it that much. But I'm a big fan of blues music like this. And I think the lyrics carry the song enough so that, you know, if if it was a new blues song and the lyrics were you know pretty stupid and bad i'd be like you know this isn't that good just you know make up a new chord structure for it hmm. but yeah i have to say though this song i think has the best mixture like i think his voice goes the best with this song yeah. like i can i think they really go well together actually yeah that that i think that's definitely a true statement it's like he's telling a story yeah. it, it, it really it does go well i think the way he's singing it you can really believe what he's saying too mm -hmm. like my pa he died and left me my brother got killed in the war my sister ran off and got married never was heard of anymore so he he sounds like he's gone through all of this in his life I think. 
which is really interesting. Like, as I said, I wasn't able to listen to the lyrics all that much, but read that, read what he said, like, all one right. more time. My Paul died and left me. My brother got killed in the war. My sister, she ran off and got married, never was heard of anymore. Th- those are really strange lyrics for this kind of song that people would be dancing to and having a good time to. Yeah. I, I, but I don't know why, but that just works so well in a weird, like, how do, how do I describe it? Like, um, I, I don't know. The, I, the words are not going to come to me, yeah. but yeah. And the lyric is wrong here, too. It says, I got my dial set on the radio. I'm telling myself I'm still alive. When the lyric he sings is, got my dial on the radio. I wish my mother was still alive. So that's pretty, that's a pretty big mistake to make because that's one of my favorite lyrics from the song. Yeah. But pretty, yeah. like, s- sad lyrics yeah. going along with this. Going like along with this kind of... Cheery. It's like cheery. Yeah. It's like he's not really sad as long as he's... A, as as much as he's like accepting and kind of accepting the bitterness of life like he kind of downplays you know my sister ran off and i never saw her anymore Mm -hmm. and he kind of says it in like one lyric well i could see this like imagine somebody singing to a crowd kind of telling his story to this Mm -hmm. crowd i i could see that Um, yeah and he does say at the end of the song i'm gonna speak to the crowd and I'm going to teach peace to the conquered and tame the proud, is what he says. Mm. So, And I think my favorite lyric here is this lyric. Samantha Brown lived in my house for about four or five months. Don't know how it looked to other people. I never slept with her even once. Mm. So I think that's a really funny one. And uh, another one that I'll do real quick that closes the song. Um The leaves are rustling in the wood. Things are falling off the shelf. You're going to need my help someday, sweetheart. You can't make love all by yourself. So I really, I I just love the humor that he uses. A little bit of a dark humor, but I really enjoy his lyrical imagery. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's all we have to say about that. I'm sorry I'm talking so much about this. No, no, I think. I'm sure you'll have a lot more to say. Yeah. You might have a lot more to say about the next album than me. But, but that's perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. Hold on, I'm just remembering. This song. Track number six, Floater. Ask too much. Too much, too to, much ask. to ask. So, Go can ahead. you hear it a little bit? Yeah, let me look at the notes. So this is like a, a country, a country swing song a little bit. Kind of a slow swing. But okay. this is very, very, like, traditional, old-sounding. Like, it's it's a lot. With the violin. Yeah, I think when, you, when I hear it, I think about, like, a country hoedown a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not as, I mean, you know, more of an authentic one. I mean, when people think of country hoedowns now, they kind of think of really corny. Like know, in a barn. Yeah. Like but, like, you know, kind of a little bit more refined, like they would actually have. So, what do, you, huh. do you have anything to say about it? Um, well, in my notes, I said that I didn't like the rhythm, which I don't... <laughs> Listening now, I don't know. It's just a little bit, like, kind of chugging along to me a little bit. Um, it's it doesn't. It's Listening to it again, it's not that big of a deal, actually. Um, I, I honestly don't have too much to, to, to say. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't have... Yeah. Let me see if I like this one. Uh, this was like no, yeah, I had a thumbs down for this one, and the last one I had a thumbs down to as well. Yeah. And the next one. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly, this is my favorite song on the album, and I think it's really? the best song on the album. Really? Interesting. Um, I've kind of I hadn't written down the uh, song rankings for this one, so I'll kind of give up on that. But this is definitely a ten out of ten for me. Okay. Um, I just. Whenever I listen to it, it makes me feel happy. And I think the lyrics are great. Some standout lyrics um, is this kind of tangent. He goes on near the end. He says, my grandmother could sew new dresses out of old cloth. I don't know if they had any dreams or hopes. I had them once, though, I suppose, to go along with all the ring dance and Christmas carols on all the Christmas eves. I left all my dreams and hopes buried under tobacco leaves. Interesting. So that's classic Bob yeah. Dylan to if, me. If you hear it, he has to say it all really quickly to get it done by the end of the uh, by the end of the chord progression. Hmm. 
but and then he has this thing about Romeo and Juliet kind of arguing which is is funny just go and listen to the song yourself I don't want to say all these lyrics yeah but yeah I this is my favorite song on the album and I think it's great okay uh, all right, moving Dude, on. Our our opinions are very different. On this yeah, so we we d- we just naturally listen to to different music, yeah. and like I think you'll be able to see that in the album that I chose is more of a jazzy R and B ish. Uh, it has a lot more elements. And then would you say this album, like that album, pretty much reflects the music that I listen to in its entirety? Yeah, a lot more. Yeah. And then you listen to like this kind of stuff, right? Yeah, I I mean I wouldn't say I exclusively this, yeah. but this is uh, something I really enjoy. And uh, just a, a thing to note is you just in life ten I'm not talking about you specifically. Yeah. I'm talking about everybody likes music that they've had good experiences with. So if you have had any sort of good experience with a certain song and you you know maybe you were just, like seeing like beautiful stuff in nature and that that's probably going to make you like this song more um because you associate it with the memory i don't have yeah. memories with this album because i just listened to it a couple times yeah. um i definitely feel that like just real quick mm-hmm. an album that is really acclaimed rumors by fleetwood mac uh you know does it have the song I, dreams on it yeah that's really what dreams is off but like the whole album i used to listen to it a lot when and i remember i used to you know kind of talk to this girl and like this girl who liked it a lot, and now I kind of can't can't stand some oh, yeah. of the songs from it just because of that memory of her. I feel that, she, bro. It was just kind of sour in the end. But dang, um, that's <laughs> kind of ha- life has music has its effect on your life. One hundred percent. So yeah, no we doubt. Can move on to the next one. High water for Charlie Patton. And, and and so for me, um, personally, in my notes, I gave this one a thumbs down. Uh, it definitely the most country sounding one off the album uh his i think his voice goes well with it uh i just don't like country music naturally uh that's the only reason um it's just not for me so i'm not going to say it's a bad song i think it's a, it's a great song if you like country music uh just not for me personally yeah yeah that i i mean you know that's respectable either way um by the way charlie patton is uh, an American Delta blues musician who is considered by many to be the um, father of the blues or father of Delta blues, but he's a, a very old blues musician. Um, and, you know, I think this song is good. It's not one of my favorites on the album. I think this is the only song with a banjo in it. Which It was I the kinda, banjo yeah, that kind of made it like, so. Yeah, I kind of like that touch a little bit, but I think the song is kind of missing something a little bit. It's just, I, I don't know. I think there could have been something more huh. to it. Well, um, his voice really goes w- well with it. It sounds like he's like an old man that's been through a lot. Yeah. I think this whole album kind of like applies to that too. Mm. But uh, a few favorite lyrics. I know I definitely have one. I'm trying to, I'm trying to yeah, right here. He says, I got a craven love for blazing speed, got a hopped up Mustang Ford, jump into the wagon, love, throw your panties overboard. Which, every time I hear that, I laugh. Just thinking about the 60-year-old man, you know, telling this lady to get, and, you know, (laughs) get with him in that way. Yeah. It's just... The wit. Yeah, the wit. And it's like, on his album from 2014 called Tempest, he has a lyric... It says, I'm not dead yet. My bell still rings. So, like, he's definitely n- not out of the game of love and that he writes about it a lot. Interesting. So I think that's really interesting um, uh, thing in his songwriting. And I don't really think there's any other super standout um, lyrics on here. But okay. That's just my favorite on it. All right, moving on to track number eight, Moonlight. Uh, this, I think, was one of the ones... I had two favorites uh, from this album, and Moonlight was definitely one of them. Uh, I just gravitate towards jazz naturally, and um, I really like... Actually, I guess it's... You kind of rub the drum with like some sort of brush or something. It's like something yeah, like that. Sh- sh- I, r- I love that. The guitar, uh, beautiful... 
Yeah, I, I, I really like this track. Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of influence you can hear of just kind of the, the jazz influence that has had on him in this song. And, yeah, this wasn't one of my favorites when I first heard it, but it's really grown on me, and I really enjoy it. This is like a song to listen to at nighttime when you're kind of like just chilling a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, and I would see how his voice wouldn't really fit this song, kind of like By and By. It has the same kind of vibe as By and By, in my opinion. Hmm. But I think this song is, is far superior to By and By. Um and he's pretty pretty tame on his lyrics in here kind of you know he says i'm preaching peace and harmony the blessings of tranquility so yeah he's, I, he's pretty tame here i think his his voice is also a little bit more tame on this one as well yeah he can control his voice i found pretty good yeah. just from watching i watch a lot of live videos just on youtube and if he wants his voice to have that rasp, he'll put it in. And like on Lonesome Day Blues, yeah, for example. Yeah, it can be a little bit, um, a little bit clearer, like he kind of does on here. But I think, I think this is a, a great song in its own right, and I think it has a good place on the album too. Yeah. All right. Uh, check number nine, "Honest with Me." You said this this song specifically won an award, right? Uh, it was, it, I don't think it won. It was nominated for Best Male Rock Performance, I think. Which, uh, just to start off on this song, this song has really grown on me since I first heard the album, too. And I really love this one. And I think the, the lyrics are great. And it starts off with a bang, with a great lyric. He says, I'm stranded in the city that never sleeps. Some of these women, they just give me the creeps. And, you know, classic wood. Well, um, yeah, I just the imagery that comes to mind when I hear this song is, I, I just, again, it's not for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds, I can see it having its place in certain areas and and stuff like that. I, I just uh, you're talking about the lyrics. No, just the the overall sonics and the sound yeah. of this this track. Um, you know, it makes me think of like. A bunch of guys with beers in a, in a truck yeah. like i can see that and then them playing this and just like buzzing like just like driving super fast down the highway or something yeah. um I, it's just yeah i think i do really like the guitar on it mm -hmm. like the i think it's a slide that he does after each lyric he does a bow bow so yeah. i like that um quite a bit um i like the lyric he says you say my eyes are pretty and my smile is nice i'll sell it to you at a reduced price I think that's a pretty good lyric. Mm. The track is just very lively. And for he, sure. he says this, which is, it's pretty, pretty cool, I think. He says, I'm here to create the new Imperial Empire. I'm going to do whatever circumstances require. So he is not fooling around. And he also says, the last thing I'll say, he says, my, my parents warned me not to waste my years, and I still got their advice oozing out of my ears. He just from a, st a lot of the stuff that you've read, it sounds like he's like somewhat of like this. I don't want to say activist necessarily, but like he's talks about preaching peace a lot. It seems, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, creating a, a new empire, s yeah. stuff like that, a revolutionary. I'll say that's interesting. Yeah. All right, moving on to to my favorite song, number ten, Po Boy. Really, this is your favorite song on it? Yeah. In fact, that's interesting. I want to turn it up real quick. I do yeah, this gives me like a friendly, um, a friendly vibe. You know, it's like one of those songs you might hear at the end of Toy Story. Uh, yeah, I, I can definitely hear like the Toy Story Randy Newman vibe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, but this one's probably my favorite. Um, I think his voice goes well with it as well. Uh, and there's some some jazz elements it seems. I really like the lick or or uh, whatever you would call it with the guitar. Um, I don't know if it's called a lick, but you know that little melody he does uh, it re reoccurs. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I at first this wasn't my favorite song. At first this was my least favorite song on the album. Wow. But uh, it's really grown on me. I think the chord structure. Is really really great for Dylan 
And I read about um, the other band members kind of being really impressed when he first played this one. But um, let's see. I know I have a favorite lyric. Yeah, he says, Othello told Desdemona, um, which are characters from Shakespeare's play Othello, which I think is one of his uh, tragedies. I can't remember if it's a tragedy or a comedy. But he says, Othello says to Desdemona, I'm cold, cover me with a blanket. By the way, what happened to that poison wine? She says, I gave it to you, you drank it. So that's that's one that he has to speed along the words to get it done by the... By the end of the bar or whatever. Yeah, so I guess I haven't read it yet. Um, I do have a Shakespeare his, histories and comedies um, books. I need to read this one. But it says, um, from, from Google, it says, Desdemona is a character... In Shakespeare's play Othello, um, she's a Venetian beauty who enrages and disappoints her father when she elopes with Othello. So I guess from this lyric, you'd guess that they kind of have a strenuous relationship. I don't know if, if she actually poisons him in the story, but anyway. And then one more lyric I really like. He has a knock-knock joke in this song at the end. He says, knocking on the door, I say, who is it and where are you from? Man says Freddy, I say Freddy who? He says Freddy or not, here I come. So that was kind of I didn't notice that. That he would go so far as to make a knock-knock joke. Yeah. But yeah, that's I, I like this song. I think it's real good. Yeah, good, good vibe. All right, next one, track 11, Cry a While. I think, oh, this is not the, this is not the longest one. Let me see. Oh, so I think the... The transition was a little bit weird to me. Um, if I can just restart it real quick, and we can. Yeah, the transition in the song is definitely. So it, it fades just it fades in super fast um, to the point where it's like I don't I don't think they should have even done a fade in at all. Also, it kind of has somewhat of a Jamaican like reggae boom, dun, dun, like I don't know how to describe that rhythm, but you can hear just a faint hint of that kind of rhythm or whatever um in in this track which i don't know it it's interesting to say the least yeah. um but yeah to me yeah that's interesting you should think that i think it kind of fades in and it starts with a, a like a 12 bar blues kind of like dun, 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 dun. and then like it on the verses it goes straight into like a straight um you know straight I can't think of the time signature, but it it totally changes. Time yeah, the time exactly, exactly. That's why I said yeah, yeah. Which is really strange for a Bob Dylan song, at least. But uh, you know, this is one of the songs on the album that I've just kind of liked, and I've just continued to like it. I haven't, it hasn't grown on me, or it hasn't, you know, I haven't liked it less. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, lyrics are just kind of. I mean, they're amazing, but they're just kind of average for Bob Dylan. Hmm. But uh, the first, I want to have at least one that I say. Well, the the it always comes back to, um, I cried for you. Now it's your turn to cry a while. So I guess he's talking to some girl that's done him wrong, apparently. Wow. So the I'll, I'll say the very first um, line. I had to go down and see a guy named Mr. Goldsmith, a nasty, dirty, double-crossing, backstabbing Tony I didn't want to have to be dealing with, but I did it for you, and all you gave me was a smile. I cried for you, now it's your time, turn to cry a while. Yeah. So apparently he did this big thing for her, and all she gave him was a smile. I feel that. And apparently what the smile was not enough yeah. for Mr. Dylan. No. But yeah, I think we'll both agree it's... You know, it's not a standout track, but the, yeah, the the most interesting thing is like that that the the change in time signature. Uh, it's really interesting. Definitely threw me hard off. hard to do. In fact, yeah. uh, I guess if you're playing it live, you know, that's just yeah. hands hands off or hats off to them for accomplishing that. Yeah, that's one of the it's one of the most creative things I've musically I've ever heard him do hmm. because I do listen to a lot of his stuff. Yeah. But yeah. We can move All on. right. Now to the last track, Sugar Baby, track number 12. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the longest track on the album from what I can see. Yep. And this was a gr I feel like it's the perfect outro. Um like 
there's not a song on here that could have been a better outro song or not even necessarily an outro but just a last song it really closes and wraps up i think the whole album well and leaves it on a, mm-hmm. a good note yeah. um let me see if i had anything i did like this one um yeah i just said it's a fitting outro yeah i think so too um it's very soft and it has the riff that ki- when you first hear the riff on first listen it kind of seems a little bit off like he's not really playing the right note but the more you listen to it it, it's perfect and it's a very minimalist song um, musically but uh, the lyrics are very informative um, he says I got my back to the sun because the light is just too intense and he's very vul- this is the most vulnerable vulnerable he has been on this album is on this last song um, and the other lyric I really like try to make things better for someone sometimes you just end up making it a thousand times worse Hmm. which is very true and he says look up look up seek your maker before gabriel blows his horn and that's that's the last verse of it he ends on that so it's kind of like it kind of feels foreboding a little bit the song does yeah i don't know me just kind of like something is coming yeah and he's kind of contemplating a little bit yeah, I feel kind of bad for him, man. He seems like he's been through a lot. And he's just <laughs> he does. Poor Bob Dylan. All right. Um, yeah, that's it. So as as a whole, what would you rate this album? As a whole, I would rate this album, um, in terms of Bob Dylan albums, nine. Hmm. Um, you know, he's just had so many different phases, and the style of songwriting on this is just so different from when he first started and what he's most known for. Yeah. Um, but I really love this. It None of these songs after listening to this album maybe 10 to 15 times since I first heard it in the past three months, none of them has gotten old. Wow. And, you know, I just continue to listen and love it. And, yeah, it sounds great. Uh, the album cover, his album covers is, have been pretty lacking since the late 90s. Um, I'd probably rate it maybe 7. The album cover? Okay. 7 out of 10. Hmm. But I think overall it's a, it's a 9. Somewhere between 9 and 9.5 nine and out of 10, 10 okay. um, for me. Interesting. Do I do like the, I think the album cover fits pretty all right with I, it. Yeah. It's, it more, makes me yeah. think of a, like a compilation, like a greatest hits cover. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I think... What I'm about to say might shock you, Jared, because I actually, and that's because I can recognize something. I think this album is an eight out of ten. That's good. Probably did not expect that from me, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, no, yeah. well, and that's just because I can recognize I might not like what I might not like good music. I this is good music, but it might not be for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, like, I feel the same way about things too. Yeah. So. I, I think this is an excellent album. Yeah. I just, I probably personally, I would listen to a couple of songs. I'll definitely, yeah. actually. Um, uh, but yeah, like so. You would never like go out and listen to it as a whole again, probably. Probably That's not, yeah. Yeah, because I'm very much m- probably more inclined to music like this while you're inclined to, you know, maybe newer type of hip-hop and stuff like we're about to hear. Mm-hmm. And I felt the same way. I listened to Blonde by Frank Ocean. And I was like, oh, Man, interesting. this is a, you know, a really great work of art. But, but you're not going to like listen. I don't yeah. know if I'll ever go back and listen to it again. That's interesting. I, I wanna, later, I want to hear more of your thoughts on that. Yeah. So yeah, we can move on now. That is going to be a wrap up. Whoops. All right. Well, I was trying to do a smooth transition. It made that loud, <laughs> loud noise. All right. So that's going to be it for um, Love and Theft. Now, moving on to Wu Hen by Kamal Williams. Now, I'm not going to pl- start it just yet. Um, so, this was my choice album. I chose this for Jared to listen to. And interestingly, I hadn't listened to the entire album when I told Jared, Jared that I wanted him, I wanted this to be the album uh, that I chose. Uh, I actually, after I chose it, is when I listened to it like. For the whole thing but how i came across this album i have no idea who kamal williams is at all um but there's a couple songs that 
well, one of the songs I was recommended on my Discover Weekly on Spotify. And then I also watch Disclosure's Twitch streams. And at the very end of one of their streams, they played the song 1989 from this album as their outro. And I, you know, they didn't, well, they're just playing. And I was like, what song is this? I look it up and I find out that I have another song uh, from there. And then called Sweet Street Dreams. And then also the song Mr. Wu I had come across before. I don't remember where. So I I liked all three of these songs and um, I was listening to them a lot. Like they actually really stood out to me. Um, and, you know, I want to listen to it as a whole. Um so yeah that's 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 what i can say about the the whole album it's an instrumental so there's like only one song that has any actual singing or or lyrics on it um but yeah you have the it looks like the wikipedia from yeah just some backstory um it's a second studio album by english musician kamal williams released on july 24th 2020 under his Black Focus label. So I guess he has his own record label. Um, so it's a new album. Yeah. I did not, I guess. Yeah, it's 20. very new. Uh, the album title was named after the nickname his maternal grandmother gave him and is a nod to his lineage as a descendant of the Wu dynasty. And, yeah, it's kind of his own genre that he dubs Wu Funk. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. It okay. Says, it was met with generally favorable reviews. Obviously, it's not very well known yeah uh maybe it's more well known over in you know england or europe where he's from but yeah he collaborates with miguel atwood ferguson a uh, session musician of los angeles he's also like a producer and a bunch of different stuff i couldn't find out what he actually plays at first i thought it was saxophone because on the songs he's um credited uh featuring on the actual track there's saxophone, but there's also saxophone parts in and the songs, songs that are not crediting to him. Hmm. And uh, the one song that has vocals, which is Hold On, Lauren Faith sings on that, and she's just a singer. Yeah, um, so this overall, the the whole general sound of it, it's a lot of Rhodes keyboard, um, or a strange variant of the Rhodes, as far as I can tell. Um, a lot of, you know, Calls it woo funk, but I would say it's definitely in the in the jazz vein. So let's talk about this track number one. It's ten tracks long. Um, so track number one called "Street Dreams" with Miguel Atwood Ferguson. Uh, opens up with a really like mysterious vibe. Um, with I think a harp and it's yeah, just get a mysterious vibe. You can hear it now and then throughout the song. You kind of hear. A crowd talking getting like automated like louder and then quieter uh it's it's almost as if it's telling a story without any words kind of i don't know what the story is but it's it's really interesting it gives the the track a lot of character um and the saxophone is beautiful the 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 orchestra the orchestral elements i think are beautiful i really like this uh track well, I have a bunch of notes on this album, but uh, for Street Dreams, uh, right off the bat, I'm a big David Bowie fan, and this reminded me of something straight out of his albums from the Berlin Trilogy, um, like Heroes or Low. And I don't know if anybody knows what that is, but um, Heroes and Low both have a lot of instrumental work on them, and this just sounds like a David Bowie instrumental from one of those albums. I love the saxophone. Uh, I love the strings, and I think it's a very fitting opener for the album. Mm-hmm. And I really, I really love this song, and I'm gonna rate it nine out of ten. I do have written, um, written ratings for these. Okay. And an overall album rating at the end. So. Yeah, it's pretty sh- short actually, two minutes and twelve seconds. Um, but yeah, that's that's Street Dreams. Now this next song called One More Time. I hate the transition. I absolutely. Like they took such an L with this. Um, you go from this. You can hear it now. It's so loud and obnoxious. From going from Street Dreams, a very calm, very relaxing, mysterious song to this obnoxious synth 
Um, it, it doesn't fade in or anything. I do not like that transition. But apart from that transition, the track in itself, like, I, I still find that synth pretty obnoxious. The drums are okay. I mean, they're, that's got to be hard to play. Um, but I mean, it just, it seems like an exercise of music theory. Uh, not necessarily like, I mean, the groove is okay. It just seems like it's more of an exercise of music theory, like Jacob Collier to the point where it's like almost not so enjoyable. Um, but it might be like to, to people who are really into, to, to the, to the music and, and how it's made. It's like, wow, this is really complicated. This is really good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I definitely understand that. Like, some things, like, I, I'm not, like, a huge advocate of, like, um, what's it called? Like, novelty bands or novelty artists who kind of, like, do one thing. Like, you know, this is a bad example because I love this group. But, like, the White Stripes, you know, their novelty was, it was just a guy and a drummer. And, you know, it's just something that I don't appreciate a lot. Like, you know, you said Jacob Collier, his big thing is, like, he does all this complex stuff mm -hmm. where is it really like good and enjoyable in yeah. the end or is it just kind of this guy flexing everything <laughs> that he can do which yeah. i don't really enjoy his music but honestly i think i think that they should have placed pigal which is the fifth track between street dreams and this one hmm. kind of to to kind of raise the uh tempo a little bit going into it um so yeah I, I really love this song. I think it has an awesome, you know, synth and drums. Did you find it's, it obnoxious? Just uh, yeah, but I do find it very, you know, very good in its, you know, obnoxious way. I like the thing that I thought of was like anxious jazz is what I was kind of huh. like anxious techno jazz. Well, and even even just the notes that are being played by that dun 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 dun, dun, dun I do not like that uh, the pattern like the notes yeah. just are not appealing to me yeah it, i can get that but this th i would say this is probably one of my least favorites on the track um on the whole album but yeah. it's well, just I, I kind of ex enjoyed the experimental nature of like the little synth rift he does mm -hmm. and like the saxophone has like one part that comes in near the end of the song and i thought it was just yeah. kind of fitting in its kind of anxious vibe and uh yeah, I rated this one nine and a half out of ten. I thought it was wow. better than Street Dreams. Maybe not wow. super well placed okay. on the album, but I interesting. Really okay, I respect that opinion. And then one thing that I you'll hear in there, and you'll hear throughout the album, and I really like this, um, especially on the next track. But you'll hear like people talking. You'll hear like the musicians talking, like mm -hmm. "Oh, bring that back" or something like that. I really like that actually, and it, it, I, I think love that too. Yeah, on this next song, nineteen eighty nine. When they do that, I don't know what it is, um, but it, it really makes this song sort of a chill banger. Mm -hmm. So this this is 1989. Yeah, it, I think the tra transition between One More Time and 1989 was far better. Mm -hmm. than Street yeah. Dreams. So. Um, this is probably one of my favorites on the tr on on the album for sure. It an interesting fact about this is that the tempo changes. So as the song goes on the it's slowing down actually um which i don't know if the the regular person would notice that but it it, it is there um and it i don't i've never really seen that happen before in in music so i like what it does uh, i like the effect that it has on on the listener um the saxophone is very nice I really like the chords. Uh, love the orchestra. I don't know why, but this song being as slow as it is and as chill as it is, as it is I, I, I really do see this song as like a banger. Like it goes very, it, I don't know why, uh, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's all I have to say. Going about off this of what one. you said, first of all, I think this could have been a part of One More Time if they wanted it to just be the same track but uh no it is pretty much a completely different type of song and that's what i love about like you know actually having you know bands play on albums mm -hmm. and like do live stuff is where you can like change tempo and you can go off of each other and follow each yeah. other that is so. so hard to do just on a computer it's yeah yeah, yeah definitely 
it definitely has that authentic feeling. Um, you know, relaxed, chilled vibe, great drumming. Um, I really love the ending to this song too, but you know, it didn't really grab me that much and I think it's missing something. Just that's just me, but I gave it an eight out of ten. Okay. I still think it's a good a good uh piece of music. Yeah. Uh and and just something to note off of this song, the roads or the keyboard, it has like a a squishy sound. It's like mm-hmm. kinda of, you'll hear that kind of element in the roads and you hear that pretty much in a lot of the other songs as well um all right so next is i don't know how to say that toulouse or something toulouse this is track number four i can't remember actually what what this one is oh right this was the very very jazz sounding one actually so this song i like the piano from it very like i like the chords the notes the regret the progression um and just like actually the choice of piano like the specific piano that they have on here uh the sound of it is is great um one of the m- most jazzy ones you know tracks on this album uh but yeah is that all you have to say as of now yeah well right away you know you get you know the Rhodes piano or what I can't remember if it's... I think it's just a regular sounding piano. Yeah. Here. Just yeah, a regular. Just a regular. Um, and you get the strings. The strings sound amazing. They sound great. It's yeah. lovely. And really, what when I was listening to this... Um, I know you probably don't know him, but if anybody out there... Um, it reminds me of Nick Drake uh, a little bit, just with the prominent string, drums, and piano combo. Um and you know we also get some more great saxophone parts but yeah i i gave this song a nine nine and a half out of ten i really mm. enjoyed this one a lot a lot more than uh, the previous 1989 yeah uh, i i didn't give any any of them a rating but it is really interesting how you get this kind of ch- really chill vibe um and then i believe you get drums oh no okay you got some yeah, I just absolutely love the orchestral elements of this whole album. It's probably one of my favorite parts. It's probably what makes it distinct. Um, I think, yeah. This, I think this song has the best string arrangement, too. Yeah, it's really nice. The bass is great. Okay, all right. Next, Pigale, if that's how it's said. And I'm unfamiliar with a couple of these, so... Again, it has that same exact piano, so you're seeing this kind of reoccurring instruments throughout this whole thing. Um this whole project yeah this was one of the more upbeat ones um i really don't have much to say yeah you go ahead um well at first i think the fade into the song is a little bit lacking it could have been better uh i think this is great just jazz with nice bass playing great drumming and this is the most just straightforward jazz song on the album it's just you know straight jazz all the way through um and it slows down about four minutes in just to the trio of piano, drums, and uh, bass. And then the sax, you know, comes in. Great saxophone work, too, just on this whole album, really. Yeah. And I gave the song a 10 out of 10. Really? Um, I just think it's a great jazz song. Yeah, I, I can definitely see if this song came after Street Dreams and then to One More Time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have been much better. Um, Building up the tension. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's... That's pretty much all there is to say. Not really any lyrics. So next is track six, Big Rick. And again, this is one I'm unfamiliar with, so I'm going to listen to it so I can remember. Oh, okay. I do know this one. From what I... Yeah, okay. I really like the the chords and the, the lead synth in this song. I think it's great. You know, just the progression. The groove... It's probably one of the most stand out things about this track. Um, if you make music, especially on a computer program, you'll know that you can have the basically four bars and you, you put it in the pattern and it's going to hit exactly right on beat. And sometimes it's really good to have it just a little bit off. And you see that, especially because it's live music and humans 
just you know play stuff off all the time so the groove is really great how it's just slightly offbeat sometimes i love it uh it gives it a really good groove so yeah the drums definitely are just doing a bunch of polyrhythmic stuff and uh let's see what i have it's just very laid back um and it kind of leads the song into a kind of a trippy jazz you know spectrum um you know it's kind of a little bit psychedelic in my opinion but uh it gets better as it goes on um adding more of the like the synth elements and i gave it an eight and a half out of ten hmm. and it has a great transition into this next song too and let's just listen to that yeah. So you're still hearing that same synth, not synth, uh, that Rhodes. Oh, I do remember that. Okay. Yeah, more upbeat. Sounds Very good. funky. Okay. And again, you're still, if you did not see that this was a transition, because he's using the exact same Rhodes, you would probably think you just are entering a different section of the same exact song. Um, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so this is track number seven called Save Me. Uh, do you have anything on this? Yeah. Um, of course, it's more up, upbeat. It's kind of like a sequel to Big Rick. Um, it has a great bass line, too, that complements the drums perfectly. And it's the most funky song on the album, too, especially for the past last like two and a half minutes. It's just kind of a, you know, very, very funky. Yeah. So I like it a lot. I rated it uh, eight and a half. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I really don't have anything else to say on this. All right, next is Mr. Wu. Uh, now, this is, again, one of my favorites. This is a very, like, laid back. I love the chord progressions. Um, oh, wait, no, this is Hold On. Sorry. Skipped it. I skipped Mr. Wu. Oh, now I remember Mr. Wu. I was, I, I, I having trouble recalling which one's which it's okay um but yeah i really like the the synth on here and just it's it's really kind of trippy at first like just the attack on this it's like really fades in each time and then the with the way the drums come in i think it's excellent uh, i really like this song yeah yeah uh same you know it it has the same opening chord from where save me left off and then it goes into a different thing, which I, w I found pretty strange, but I liked that. Um, and then the drums kick in, and it's just very groovy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it, it just doesn't let up. Once the drums kick in, the whole song is just, you know, it's it's It's, it's actually energy. really house, um, yeah. especially at this point right here. You're getting that organ that is very house-like. Um, it, yeah, I, I really do. I, I like this one. I kind of almost forgot about that genre music. So like, oh, yeah. Yeah, it, once you mention it, it does sound like, you know, kind of electronic house type mm -hmm. music. For sure. Next is Hold On, and this is the one that I was talking about with it's really calm, uh, slow. This is the one with the lyrics. I really like the chord progression, just the speed, the rate that this song progresses at. Um, and I think Lauren Faith actually did a really good job on this track. Like she, th she fits well in my opinion. Uh, the lyrics, I mean, there's, it's, it doesn't necessarily seem to be about anything from what I can tell. She's talking about stripping materialistic things away at, at one point. Um, that's the one thing that stood out to me. Um, but yeah, I really like the roads on this one too. Um, for me... Uh, well, yeah, it's the first, uh, you get the first vocals on the album, not um, counting, you know, just dialogue, but uh, I found the lyrics to be about, like, our need to find s meaning in life, and sometimes we just need a reason to hold on, so we create the meanings for ourselves, hmm. um, give ourselves reasons to hold on. Um, not a huge fan of the vocals. This, I mean, I mean, so, some people after hearing me praise Bob Dylan and then kind of <laughs> not say like, oh, he doesn't like, you know, on key vocals. But I mean, this isn't my, I, it's I really I like, falsetto. I really like authentic like. stuff. 
Hmm. And this just kind of sounds a little bit non-authentic. And sometimes when it's not in the experimental er arena, I can kind of not appreciate it as much. Yeah. Um, but I think the song really feels out of place on the album. Hmm. Um, I think it would have been better if she like talked the lyrics or had somebody else talk it instead of singing. But uh, yeah, I think it sounds like a R&B song out of the 70s with the string arrangements and everything. But it's my least favorite song from the album and I gave it a seven and a half out of 10. Interesting. Okay. Again, excellent choice of instruments. Last song, Early Prayer. Um, track number 10 comes in with some sort of talking, uh, like, sample, it seems. Yeah, I have no idea who this is. I'm trying to remember which one this is. I don't remember this song, actually, so I have nothing to say about it. I mean, that's okay. It seems it's, really calm. It's, it's as a good not outro. too memorable, but I do think it's a, a decent ending to the album. Just kind of bringing everything back together. Um, and, you know, you get the opening dialogue of some guy talking about a taxi, and he sounds really drugged up. Or I don't know what's up with him. Maybe that's just the way he talks. I don't know. But uh, we kind of just get a pad and saxophone throughout the song. Not much else. And yeah, I think it's a fitting end to the album. And it's modeled kind of after Street Dreams a little bit. Hmm. And it kind of resolves it. And it ends really quite abruptly too. Which I think, um, I kind of get what he was conveying with just having this sort of really chill. And then it just kind of ends. So Yeah, let me yeah, listen to that. kind of play it. Oh, yeah, it gets into this. I do remember this now. This ending was... Yeah. Um, but for me personally, when I listen... A lot of times when I listen to music, music um, I'll be, like, listening to it with my headphones, like, and eventually I fall asleep. And so <laughs> when yeah. I... When the, the album has this really chill outro, it's a great way to kind of... It's understandable. Yeah. Anyways, so that's Wu Hin. So that's it. I um, like the album as a whole. Mm -hmm. I have to say. Um, and it, yeah. yeah. I so. do have an album artwork rating, too. Oh, I'm interested. Um, I don't like it. A six and a half. Yeah, I it doesn't seem to fit. I don't really like these type of artworks that are becoming more and more kind of common. Uh, it's like a, a graphic design-ish. It's, it's I'm just, more of a fan of, you know just not not this type it doesn't really it just kind of looks like something like wa like stock wallpaper you would get on a computer like 100 computer. and he just added you know the words on there but you know if he likes it you know more power to him but based on all my ratings i the album is a nine out of ten for me so interesting i, I really enjoyed it um and with the exception of hold on i would probably you know add these songs to my you know instrumental playlist that i listen to and oh really so do you think them. you're going to listen to it again or some of the songs at least yeah i think i will listen to it again and if i ever find it on vinyl i will definitely add it to my record collection that's so a success that's the thing like if i ever saw frank ocean's blonde on vinyl at a decent i mean those things go for crazy money oh really if i had a chance to add it to my collection i definitely would well i probably wouldn't stream it but that's just me interesting all right so that that's it yeah all right guys um so you can again you can check out jared's channel it's the link is in the description do you want to shout out your instagram or anything else well instagram is just called jared on vinyl too yeah um and do you yeah. do written reviews uh, i have a few on there i i haven't done them in a while i think the last one i did was like when fine line came out by harry styles oh wow but i think okay. that was the last one i did but Anyway, uh, I don't do a lot of stuff on there, but I'm trying to do more stuff on my YouTube. 100%. It was a pleasure. Doing we went for an hour and 19 minutes. Wow. Shake and hand. Shake. There we shake go. All right. There we go. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a good day, and we'll see you later.